Boy, was it a wet day in the Delaware Valley yesterday here at Citizens Bank Park. Folks came out. They were getting comfortable. We got an inning and a half in, and then all of a sudden they decided to put the tarp on the field, which turned out to be the right decision because as the tarp went on, the rain started to fall even harder. Take a look at that. That was basically the scene most of the day, and now we do a little time lapse through Center City. Yep, cloudy, rainy, windy, and then poof, this morning, beautiful. Blue skies and sunshine, and folks are waiting outside because we've got a traditional doubleheader here at Citizens Bank Park. We have all kinds of giveaways. There's the Fanatic Authentic jersey being given out. We've got more trucks being given out, sunglasses. It's Weekends with Schmidt presented by Acme Markets. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy along with Matt Stairs and Mike Schmidt. We get ready for two here at Citizens Bank Park. All right, Mike, I don't want to make you feel old or anything like that, but back when you played a traditional double double header was no big deal. No, we had about five of them, five of those a year. Tom, uh, call me crazy. I love double headers. <laughs> I, I loved them as a little boy going to Crosley Field in Cincinnati, watching the Reds play a double header. As a fan, you get 18 innings of baseball, and I liked them. I even might say that I loved them as a player because I, I got myself into this mindset where it was going to be a long day. I'm going to get eight to ten at bats. If I can start out this double header with a walk, a hard hit ball, a base hit, I could really turn this thing into a big day for myself individually. Sometimes you got to be a little selfish in a double header. <laughs> uh, but today we're going to find out how much I like double headers as a broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> and how much these pitchers like double headers as well. Now, from a Philly standpoint, the history of twin bills take a little look like this. 476, the sweep, 683, they've been swept, and they've split it. And this is normally the case. You split a traditional double header, 968 splits during the Phillies' history. The last time they've had a traditional doubleheader was back in 2006. All right, so the doubleheader allows Matt Williams to rethink his lineup for game number one, and by rethinking it, he has put Bryce Harper back in. Well, he has, and, and the big thing, these guys, the last seven-game winning streak have been on fire. It doesn't matter if it's a pitching, bullpen starting. You can see in the graphic right here, the numbers that st jump out to me is the starters have gone 48 and two-thirds without allowing a run at one time. Home runs, yeah, they're coming along. The runs, 36. They're averaging just a little over five. They're averaging one giving up per game. And the big happen with, the, with Bryce Harper with his power. He is back in the lineup today after having a couple of hamstring sores. But this guy has been hitting home runs right field, center field. This is the impressive one. Right down the left field line, getting a fastball in the zone versus O'Sullivan. Crushing the left field. He just makes a, a presence difference in the, in the lineup. He, he walks, he hits home runs, he's hitting for a high average. You can see the numbers right here. Home runs 24 this year, career high. 58 RBIs, he's one shot tying his career high. So he's having an unbelievable first three months of the season. Very exciting player, plays great defense as well. You are a stat machine, uh, that's Unbelievable. And, and, and getting back to about the double headers, I usually didn't play either one, so I didn't care about double hitters. <laughs> At some point, you got in there, I would think. At some point, guys on the bench will get a chance to get some swings here this afternoon. It is game one of two. Game one features Steven Strasburg for the Nationals, and Kevin Correa will start game one for the Phils. We'll talk about the game two starters a little later on. We'll now talk about things that happened yesterday but technically didn't happen. This great catch by Ben Revere. Wipe it clean. Lineups and first pitch when we return to Philadelphia. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Citizens Bank. One deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. Buy Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. And buy Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Learn more at ibx.com.
football today. Two games for the price of one. The Phils and the Washington Nationals. That's getting ready to hit against Kevin Correa. Let's take a look at their starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Denard Spad is back in there in center field leading it off. And Danny Espinosa and Bryce Harper. Wilson Ramos, the catcher, bats clean up. Clint Robinson hits fifth. Dan Uglo will bat sixth in the bottom third of Desmond Taylor and Steven Strasburg. And they'll face 34-year-old right-hander Kevin Correa. Correa did not last all that long in his last outing, but the Phillies won the game against the Yankees. He's 0-1 with an ERA of 4.30. Matt, we wondered uh, if there was anything wrong with Kevin Correa, and he said afterward, he said, no, it's fine. Everything was fine. He just couldn't find the strike zone on a consistent basis. Well, and that's the thing for him. He, he's having a hard time throwing strikes. You see the Budweiser scouting report. Uh, he uses all five pitches, average velocity, 88.2 mile an hour on his, on his heater, and the league is hitting 200 versus his curveball. Well, the first batter he'll face is Denard Spann. Hitting 301 with five homers and 21 runs batted in. He is shaken off the back spasms and is ready to go. He was not scheduled to play yesterday's ball game because of back spasms. He missed the first game of this series. And he takes outside. One ball, no strikes. Amazing the difference that the uh, lineup looks with Harper's name in it, isn't it? I mean, some other guys get to now move to more comfortable slots. Some other guys get benched. Right, you got to work around him if you're a pitcher. Yeah, I think if you're Matt Williams, you're pretty happy that the uh, hamstrings aren't bothering him as much anymore, and you can put him in maybe for both of these games. 2 0 pitch to span, and he takes a strike. It's 2 and 1. And not only that, you have to manage around him if you're Pete McCannon. As the game gets close to the end, and close ball game, you, you really have to consider Bryce Harper when you're making your matchups. That one's a tad high, and it's three and one. There is Pete McCannon, his second official game as the interim manager of the Philadelphia Phillies. He's gone through the normal routines, meeting with the members of the media before uh, Friday's game, after yesterday's uh, rain out. Danny Espinosa waits on deck. Espinosa will have a full beard by the time game two is over <laughs> with today. <laughs> That's no word of a lie. He will. Three balls, two strikes to span. And he pops it foul over the third base dugout out of play. It's the kind of at bat you want to see from your leadoff hitter right here. Five pitch, six pitch at bat now. We're in a 3 2 count. Everybody gets to see what Correa has today. The sense of how hard he's throwing, what pitches he likes. You can see it all in one at bat. Yeah, last time out, 40% fastballs, 26% uh, change ups. And a swing and a miss. And there's one out here in the first inning. All right, guys, it's now time for our Nissan keys to the ball game. Well, and my first key, or the key for me, is you have to be patient versus Strasburg. You know, in 10 starts this year, he has thrown 49 and a third innings, less than five innings per outing. So, see some pitches, get in the bullpen. Well, the minds that take off on the opening uh, were playing a doubleheader is a mind game. you got to get your mind right for a doubleheader uh, and realize you. You know, it's like in golf when you have a bogey on the first hole and then a double bogey, and the guy comes and says, "There's a lot of golf left, Tom." <laughs> There'll always be a lot of a lot of at bats left today for these guys. So, important thing, I think, it's very important individually to get out of the shoot with a something with a hard hit ball, you know, a base on ball, something positive early. No balls and one strike to Danny Espinosa, 0 for three in the first game. He tries to bunt this one. Cameron Rupp off with the mask, and there are two outs. Kind of an interesting approach for Espinosa. Bryce Harper's coming up. He did not play Murph in game number one, but it looks like the hamstrings are fine and will enable him to at least play game 
two of the series. Yeah, and he wasn't scheduled to play yesterday in yesterday's game either, Tom. So uh, the Nats, you know, in a, in a way, get a little bit of a break, and they'll have a chance to use him in both of these games. And, you know, Mike, you just said it. When you talk about the Washington Nationals, you can't help but start to think, you know, if you're going to attack these guys and beat these guys, you've got to keep this guy in control. His numbers this year... When you look at what he's done in his career and then you look at what he's done this year, just absolutely remarkable. A career 272 guy, 18 home runs on average, 50 RBIs. How about he already has 24 home runs this season and 58 RBIs this season, not even at the halfway point. He is really having himself a coming out party. And, uh, you know, everybody knew this kid was going to be a player, but it had taken a little bit of time. But I think at this point you could say that Bryce Harper has arrived and is certainly living up to the hype. Yeah, with John Carlos Stanton being out uh, for four to six weeks with the uh, broken hemate bone and the surgery, Harper and Frazier now can set their sights on passing him uh, for the home run lead. Also, maybe the odds-on favorite in the home run derby if he decides to be part of it. Yeah, and I think if you if you look at the um, yeah the, the big pitcher Harper, left-handed hitter, sees more right-handed pitchers. I think the walks are going to start piling up on Harper even more than he has already. That one's pulled foul. Big, strong effect on the MVP race. I know we're not close to that being halfway yet, but it's still uh, going to affect Stanton's MVP numbers again at the end of the year. You notice Harper come out with uh, no batting gloves. Uh, isn't that unusual for him? That's a good question. No, he wears either no batting gloves or one on his bottom hand. Never wears two. He'll wear one on his right hand or he'll go bare hand. That's old school right there. Man, take some, some tough hands. Outside three and two, so he's gone full to two batters in this first inning. Correa, the last time he pitched against the Yankees, we pointed it out. He just didn't look like he was loose. He kept stretching his arm out, kept rubbing his shoulder. Today, it's a little different story. He looks a little more comfortable out there on the mound. And the 3 2 pitch. That one's pulled toward first, a foul ball. High change up up in the zone. Not an area where you want to live with the change up. I don't mind a heater up there, not a change up. Down the right field line. It's going to be in for a base hit. Frank Core will get to it. Harper's on his way to second. The throw by Frank Core, not in time. So a two out double. That's the 16th double of the season for Harper. Well, that might answer the hamstring question right there. <laughs> he did look like he was moving pretty good. Looks like a little cutter up in the zone. Huh? Yeah, definitely uh, a little up in the end. See how high he keeps his hands? That's a, another mark of a good hitter. Put down early. Mm -hmm. Just 22 years old, but he is a strong kid, and his body is uh, much more mature than a 22-year-old body. So he's in scoring position. Here's Wilson Ramos. Ramos two for three lifetime against Correa, and he hits it towards second base. Cesar Hernandez is up with it. This will be a 17 pitch inning for Kevin Correa. He works around the two out double by Bryce Harper. We'll go to the bottom of the first.
down quietly in there. Half of the first. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup for game one. Brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Revere, Hernandez, and Franco over third base in game one. Ryan Howard's at first base batting cleanup. Then Jeff Francoeur and Cody Ashey. And the bottom third of Rupp, Galvis, and Correa facing 26-year-old right-hander Steven Strasburg. One and one this year against the Phillies. He's allowed six earned runs against the Phillies in 11 innings. We remarked about his ERA the last time the Phillies faced the Nationals. Extremely high for a guy of his abilities, Matt, at 5.90. Well, it's very high for a guy that has that kind of stuff. Um, you know, when you're... It's amazing when you're averaging... You know, 95 miles an hour on your heater. Uh, the league is hitting 321 against his fastball. It's all about location. doesn't matter how hard you throw. You can see the scouting report right there. Good numbers versus the Phillies, but he has changed his delivery from his last outing. He used to start with his hands up high. Now his hands start down lower, and it seems like he's getting a better rotation and a turn when he, when he throws the ball. And mechanics have been a big issue for him so far this year. They talked about that in spring training. First pitch to Revere is in there. It's 0-1. You can see his hands are down lower where they used to be up, sorry, up higher on his chest before. I'll tell you, it'd be a <laughs> great job to have the pitching coach for the Washington Nationals. <laughs> I, I, I wonder uh, how much Strasburg's benefiting from being a teammate, uh, pitching teammate of Max Scherzer, watching what he's doing. I mean, you think it takes pressure off of uh, Strasburg? I would think it does because I mean, people I would think thought he was the number one, and he apparently doesn't like to be the number one. And Matt, you played with him. I mean, you understand that I guess better than anybody. He doesn't like to have the spotlight of being the number one guy. No, he doesn't. He wants to be just a regular, uh, regular pitcher. And unfortunately, he's not going to be because he was that big first round pick coming out of San Diego State. Great arm, has potential. It just hasn't put it all together yet. Well, he just blew up Ben Revere's bat, so one away. Here's Cesar Hernandez, one for four in game one of this series, a double and a run scored. First pitch is outside, it's one to no. These are overall hitting 243. One ball, one strike. Good luck at McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Kathy Hildwad, Sharon Hill, Pennsylvania. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, and Kathy will win $100. Cesar slaps it the other way. That's a base hit. Taylor was shaded that way, so Hernandez will stop it first, a one out single. Well, I like what I'm seeing from Cesar Hernandez now that he's had some consistency in the lineup, comes to the park now, and knows uh, while Chase, at least while Chase is on the DL, that he's going to play. And he's hanging out a lot of line drives. It's a nice way to start his day with a single the opposite way. That'll bring Michael Franco to the plate. Speaking of Franco, it's time for our Geico quote of the day. This is from Kevin Correa on Franco. He's got everything you look for in a young player. He's got similarities to Pujols with his mechanics. They're pretty amazing at this point in his career. I heard how good he was. He's showing it since I've been here offensively and defensively. Well, Correa mostly talking about that Yankee game the other day where he didn't have his best stuff, but Franco did offensively, and he really... He carried the fills in that game because there were a lot of runs being scored. One ball, no strikes to him. Very exciting young player, that's for sure. And he just broke his bat and he pops it up. Foul territory. And there are two outs. Well, to be compared to Albert Pujols, <laughs> that's a pretty high compliment. Pujols was having just a monster year. Say his legs are healthy, and that's why. So Franco's retired, over his last nine. Here's Ryan Howard. Howard hitting 294 this year against the Washington Nationals. During his career, he's had great numbers against Washington. Danny 
Espinosa is I mean he is way back in shallow right field. I mean and subsequently Bryce Harper is about three steps from the warning track in right. <laughs> That's really the deepest you'll see a guy he's backing up even more. And there's no reason to play deep in right field any ball that's hit over your head. Especially with the wind blowing slightly to the right field it's going to be a home run. Out front of an off speed pitch it's over. What, what, what else could you add to that shift I mean if. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you, you think we need the guy at shortstop. Actually his last four games hit two ground balls a short one for base hit, one for double play. But the idea is to try to get him get get him in that mindset right the idea is to well if he does that by you've won the battle and then exactly. what and what the shift is designed to do. Yeah then he's not he he didn't hit it out of the yard so. He can move ugly out the shallow center and move Desmond over to where ugly is right now and then you got it all covered. Yeah I would think you could put. Uh, Desmond sort of like just off the one side of second base and, mm -hmm. and put ugly out like you say in short center. One ball, one strike to Howard. There is Matt Williams, was not too happy that yesterday's game was halted in the second inning. Or I should say, played overall. Runner goes, pitch is swung on and missed, throw to second on one, hop, kicks off Desmond, and into shallow right field. Hernandez will get to third. Nobody was really there to cover, so a stolen base and an E2, fourth error of the year for Wilson Ramos. Great hustle. Says I got a nice jump, uh, very alertly popped up slide, and uh, saw that the ball was going to right field. That's the dive pop up slide. Hey, that's another thing about a double header. You get real dirty early, man. You think of that. A, you, by the end of the day, your your uniform, you look like you put in a heck of a day's work. Well, now it's one and two to Howard. And he foul tips that one. He's down on strikes, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, one man left in scoring position, so each team has had that. We'll go to the seconds. Continue against the Milwaukee Brewers beginning Monday and then on Wednesday and Thursday fireworks post game brought to you by Xfinity. This year's musical track is recorded by the Philadelphia Orchestra. Well last inning I want you to just go ahead and take a look right here on Michael Franco's bat. On this swing on the fastball inside. Keep a watch how this thing just. Disintegrates right in the middle of that. And Mike you made a great point how that bat stayed together. Just didn't blow yeah, up. 
It looked like a compound fracture waiting to happen yeah, there. Yes, and then when, it, when it breaks in half. You know, it didn't look like it hit that much near the label. It was, was that? Down lower. Wow. Off the end of the bat foul to Clint Robinson. One ball, one strike. Well, if you keep a track of those things, that's the second bat that Strasburg broke in that inning. He's got that kind of stuff. Clint Robinson was one for four in the first game of the series. One ball, two strikes. It is interesting how the game has changed so much. You know, Mike, you were talking during the open, and Matt, even for you in the beginning of your career, double headers were no big deal. I mean, you played them, they were just part of the landscape of, yep. of baseball. Now, if you play a doubleheader, it's normally a day-night doubleheader. You get two gates, which is understandable. And you have to call and ask permission. And you have to ask permission. All kinds of rules. Now. I think you're only allowed to have three doubleheaders per year. I never played a day-night doubleheader. I didn't, didn't have one. We played. Two balls, two strikes to Robinson. Inside three and two. Well, I don't know when it began. I know when uh, I was in the minor leagues. Uh, as a broadcaster, that's the first time I remembered ever hearing about a day night doubleheader in like 95 or 96. 96. I think my first time I ever had a day night doubleheader was uh, in Cleveland playing the Cleveland Indians. You know what? I think that is where they started. What a tough clubhouse to sit around in for eight hours. <laughs> yeah. What do you do during a day night? Do you, did you leave the park? Uh, some do you have the did. option of doing that? Oh, yeah. You can leave. Mike Sweeney used to go to chapel. <laughs> Ryan Howard flags it down. Correa is there to cover. 3 1 on the put out. Nice play by Ryan. Well, here are the particulars we showed during the open. The all time record versus the Expos, Nationals, and Doubleheaders. And Mike, you were part of this. And Matt, you were too on the other end, probably. 19 splits. Phillies were swept eight times and have swept nine doubleheaders from the Expos, Nationals franchise. Well, it's certainly a better weather day than yesterday. That's for sure. It's a better day to hit for a left hander. Put it that way. Well, I would agree with you on that one. <laughs> Dan Ugla fires a foul over the screen. It's 0 1. Yesterday, the, yesterday the wind was blowing right the other to way. left. Yeah. Wow. Look at those flags. Yeah, they're right. moving. Defensively, I might be moving uh, Cesar Hernandez over where the umpire is against Dan Ugla. The overshift for the uh, right handed batter? Absolutely. I think they've done that before, too. Well, you need a little cooperation from your pitcher on that as well, you know. He's ahead, no balls, two strikes. And a breaking ball outside, one and two. Towering fly ball to left field. Cody Ashey comes running in. Galvis is there as well, and Cody says he has it. Two outs. Monday night at five. Michael Barkan is joined by Philly's top sports writers to talk about the aftermath of the NBA and NHL drafts. Watch Philly Sports Talk, presented by Comcast Business, right here on Comcast Sportsnet. If you're here at the ballpark, if you want to go to Michael Sweet or the Comcast Suite. You can actually talk to him right now about those topics if you choose to. <laughs> Here is Michael and his family enjoying a day at the yard. Ian Desmond takes high, one and zero. I would say go down and ask him as many questions as you can. Yeah. <laughs> Desmond one for four in the opener. No one's off the end of the bat, down the right field line. Howard a long run. Oh man, he had it. He had it right in his glove, in his not in his hands, but is in, in his glove. That gentleman.
There's a guy out in Chicago saying I had a baby attached to my uh, chest and I made a one headed grab without a glove. Correa must know what he's doing here with Desmond. You see his career at career 0 for 11. I got that bat. We've seen so much success from Desmond. It's surprising to me that when, when you look at that and see 0 for 11 against him. Ian Desmond will be a free agent at the end of this season. 1 2 pitch to him. Curveball high. 2 and 2. That's the pitch right there. Kevin has to throw for a strike. Is that curveball? He's just kind of overthrown a little bit, leaving it up high. But it is nasty 12 to 6 curveball. There's a line drive toward right field. Frank Core leans in, and the side is retired. Well, he hit it hard. 0 for 12. But he's now 0 for 12. <laughs> Nothing to show for it. Nationals go down in order. Strasburg will go back to work in the bottom of the second when we return. Photo night, I should say, is coming on Saturday, July 18th. Apple Vacations Photo Night presented by Now Resorts and Spas, a free magnetic photo frame for all fans. Come out early to take photos of your favorite Phillies. It's all part of the Phillies Marlins series. Order your tickets by going to phillies.com. Jeff Francoeur will lead things off for the Phils. And he crushes one deep to left field. It is gone. Why let him have a fastball right there, right? Now that's a way to start off a doubleheader. Big time. <laughs> Just made a winner out of Kathy Hildwine of Sharon Hill and a McDonald's home run jackpot. Well, and if you remember yesterday, his first at bat, the rain delay, then the game, he hit but the same pitch right there, missile to short, but this time gets elevation. And Frenchy absolutely crushed him into left field. Fifth home run of the year, 22nd RBI for Frank Cor. Made it easy for Greg Farnese, our left field camera operator, to follow that one. It was right below him. First home run since the 6th of June for Frank Cor. Side one ball one strike. He's a he's a chatty fellow anyway, but he's going to be even chattier now that he hit a home run. Yeah, who needs batting practice, right? Who needs to see a pitch? <laughs> he had been 0 for 5 against uh, Strasburg. He had only five at bats against him. I thought it would be more than that. Here's the 2-1 to Ashy. And off the hands, Ian Desmond. One out here, the second. 
Well, good for Jeff Francoeur. Here's Cameron Ruff. Ruff hitting 253, a home run, six RBIs. Carlos was in the lineup yesterday. He'll catch game two, and that's partly because Severino Gonzalez, who is also a Panamanian, they've got a good relationship. He will pitch game two of the doubleheader for the Phillies. Breaking ball, one ball, one strike. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, I think he thought that was right there, didn't he? <laughs> I think he has all the right to say that ball is right down the middle. That one is pulled toward left field. Michael Taylor tracks it down. Kid's got some speed. Two outs. Today's game is also available in Spanish. Just use the SAP button on your television to change the language through the menu on your cable box. I didn't see Bill. I saw Angel. I saw Will. I saw Angel. He was coming out with a bunch of pastries from the uh, lunchroom. It's all the pastries you want in that lunchroom. They're calling today's ball game. Already checked it out. Pizzas being served between games. Mm -hmm. All the pizza you can eat. Mm -hmm. it's Hot like dogs. It's like you're going to a buffet. A buffet of carbs. As Calvis takes a strike, it's 0 1. Which you are off of now, correct? Well, I might have a piece of pizza or two. There's Bill and Angel. We might be getting cheesesteaks in between games, Mike. I put my order in. We're not getting filet mignon, Matt, or lobster mac and cheese. I know somebody that uh, could shoot some ribs up here. Nice that, call. That was an option, too. Swing it a miss. Galvis is struck out. One to first. I don't know if he thought that was fouled or not, but it's the second strikeout for Strasburg. Side is retired. A home run for Jeff Francoeur has given the Phils a one to nothing lead. Take a look at this one. He ambushes a fastball on the first pitch. Fifth home run of the season for Efrain Four. We'll head to the third. The Phillies on top. On the Phillies.com, go to the fan section for all the information. Please submit your answer on the subject line. Matt, I don't want to exclude you on this one, but this could be uh, really testing of Mike's memory. Who are the three members of the 76 Phillies that had that hit 300 or better 
with a minimum of 400 at bats, but 300 or better on the 76 Phillies. Oh, I'll figure that one out. Yeah. Okay. I like when Mike's on the air. <laughs> it's I'll figure that one out. I can sit back, relax. Matt, you've met two of these fellows, just so you know, just to help your thought process on it. I think you you may have met the third one too, but I'm not sure for that. Michael Taylor will lead things off here in the third. <laughs> Charlie Manuel. There's a line drive to center field. Taylor's aboard, lead off single, second hit. Broke the fastball first pitch of the game yesterday, did he not? Over center field and then yep. steady yep. diet of breaking balls. Yeah, he was uh, leading off. So Strasburg up there probably to sacrifice. He's 0 for 13 as a hitter this year. He squares. Franco charges and he bunts it foul. Strasburg during his career does have a home run. He has eight extra base hits. And he bunts that one. It's a fair ball. And they'll throw to say they've got a tag of it. See, he's going to be safe at second base, I believe, because Rupp ran into Strasburg and tagged him. And oh, then threw to kidding. second base. So that's a tag play at second base. They had time to That's tag good call, Tommy. I, I missed that one. Uh, sure, he touched him with the ball, right there. Yeah, tagged him in the leg. So the play there, ooh, the play there is, yell tag him, right? Tag yes. him, tag him, yep. tag. Yeah, he yeah, did. Right there, he did. <laughs> and they had a chance too to tag him. Oh, he would have been out very yeah. easily. So the put out at, uh, at home will go two unassisted. And I guess they'll give a sacrifice to Strasburg. Did they say sacrifice? Have to. Yeah, the official scorer needs to in assume the intent. There was a similar play the other night in the College World Series between Vanderbilt and Virginia. Very similar, where the catcher fielded it, bumped into the hitter, and they called him out. Taylor gets a stolen base on that. I think it's a stolen base on that. Is that what they said? <laughs> they just announced they got a stolen base on it. I guess they really the fielded that right over home plate. Yeah. It looked like it came backwards. Did it? It looked like it was definitely heading foul. Well, I believe uh, Jay Dunn is a, the official scorer today. I believe he'll adjust that once he sees it. I agree, Tom. One ball, one strike to Denard Span. He struck out his first time up. To the right side, Cesar Hernandez charges. 4 3 on the put out. Over the third base goes Taylor. Isn't it impossible to get a sack bunt and a stolen base at the same time? Yeah, I don't think they gave him a sack bunt. I think you just gave him a two unassisted, but. Really? I don't. I don't know if he didn't see it or not. Phillies fans, next time you're looking for great seats, get to StubHub, where there are no surprise fees at checkout. That's right, StubHub. The price you see is the price you pay. StubHub, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of Phillies.com. All right, so the Phillies up one nothing, and the Nationals have their second runner in scoring position. And here's Danny Espinosa. He tried to bunt his way on his first time up. Outside, one and
to the right side again. Cesar Hernandez stays down on it. And that'll do it for the Nationals here in the third. Well, this is a much more comfortable outing for Kevin Correa. He's allowed two hits through three. McDonald's. Double the loving at McDonald's with a double cheeseburger and small fry for just $2.50. McDonald's. I'm loving it. And buy Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop Nissan.com. Well, it's nice to be with you here on a Sunday afternoon, a doubleheader between the Phils and the Nationals. Kevin Correa will lead it off. Against Steven Strasburg. And the first pitch is over. It's 0 1. Correa does have one hit this year. He's one for three. On the shortstop, here's Desmond. He's up with it. Correa taking a stroll up the line. He's retired, one away. Ben Revere's coming up. It's time for our Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. And it has to do with Ben Revere. Ben Revere had his first career pitch at home run Friday night and his third overall. There's three home runs. Two have come against the Washington Nationals. The others, other was in September of last year against Rafael Soriano. And well, Murph, it's all part of what has been a very successful month of June for Ben Revere. I mean, he has been on a, a torrid pace offensively. He really has, Tommy. You can actually go back to May uh, when he really started to turn things around. Uh, you know, in his first 16 games, he really struggled. He was 10 for 58, uh, batting just 172 through the month of April. But then it, it all started to click for him, as it often does for him. And then you see he batting 75 for 232, 323 in his last 58 games. And you know, it's it's the kind of uh, the kind of uh, success he had last year, and you know, he was talking about his inability to to really kind of get out and, and get a quick start in April. He's never been able to do that in his career. He said, for a Southern boy, it's maybe sometimes a play, hard to play in the cold for weather. But uh, yeah, that's what he calls himself. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if he uh, if he could ever get off to a good April, it, it would be really interesting to see where the batting average would sit right about now. But he certainly has turned it on. He has 18 extra base hits this year, which is something that he was concentrating on. He only had 22 all of last year. So the numbers uh, have been good over the past two months. Coming off a year in which he had 184 hits, which was tied with the guy in center field, his good friend Denard Spann for the National League lead. Three balls, one strike to Revere. Fly ball left center field, Spann on the run. And he'll make the catch for the second out. Now that's where he would get into trouble if he did more of that. The fly ball, lazy fly ball. Well, it's a loop swing, and, and let's just not forget that he's actually had 15 walks this year, which passes his totals from last year. So he has been more patient on home plate. 
It was actually kind of funny yesterday. Uh, Murph, you were down there, right, when he came into the dugout and the rains came. He had a base hit and he had a leaping grab, and he said, "Oh man, that's, neither one of those are going to count." Yeah, he was he was disappointed. I said, "Hey, if it makes you feel better, Ben, we all saw you make the catch, so we know you can do it." But uh, yeah, it's it's not going to count in the in the, uh, in the record books for sure. Ball one strike to Cesar Hernandez. He singled his first time up, a single to left. You know, Ben is what he is. I mean, he he's a good player. He, if there was any deficiency at all, uh, you know, obviously offensively, I'm speaking about his inability to get on base more often as a leadoff hitter. You know, you go back to the at bat he just had. Now I know he, hindsight with the fly ball is, is what it is. But a lot of leadoff hitters would probably take that three-one pitch. You know, and rather than, rather than be aggressive and swinging the ball, it might be an inch off the plate or a little bit low, and, and you know, putting it in play. If you do put it in play, there's the you know the the opportunity to make an out is there. If you don't swing the bat, uh, the opportunity for the umpire to call a ball four is there, and that happens a lot throughout the year. A uh, good leadoff hitter doesn't mind hitting with two strikes. That might be his only deficiency offensively. I know he's like the little engine that could, man. He just keeps <laughs> getting hit. Another broken bat as Hernandez loops out to shortstop. Side is retired in order for Strasburg. He's retired six straight since the home run by Frank Poor. On to the fourth inning here in Philadelphia. Player of the Year is W.B. Mason, providing amazingly low prices on kitchen disposables, consumables, smallwares, and so much more. From your new restaurant partner, who but W.B. Mason. There's a W.B. Mason truck that was given out yesterday and then today also. If you came to the ballpark today, if you were kids of that age right there, you got that jersey from the folks at Pico. You got a pair of sunglasses and you got the truck. I mean, it's like Christmas. It's Why like Christmas? Daddy, mommy, bring me to the game more often, <laughs> huh? Well, that jersey's a great one. Again, it's from Pico. The truck is from WB Mason. We met a lot of the folks from WB Mason yesterday. Two great partners for the Philadelphia Phillies, uh, ongoing partners for the Philadelphia Phillies. Here's Bryce Harper to lead things off. Phillies lead at one nothing here in the top of the fourth. Harper doubled his first time up. <laughs> Harper tied with Todd Frazier in home runs tied for second. John Carlo has 27. He has three three more than those two guys. He's third in RBIs and third in average coming in. Oh there's that pitch that's Matt you're talking ball. about. Yep. This is a curveball. He took something off it a little bit had the late break straight down. Now throw the exact same pitch but drop it on home plate. They'll probably elevate here. 
Another one for Cesar Hernandez moves to his right one away. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard now the Reds and the Mets did play yesterday the game was suspended and the completion of the suspended game is taking place now it's in the bottom of the seventh inning the Reds won and the Mets won that's why it was suspended because they were tied after five innings and then they'll play a nine inning game after that's over with. So everybody's on a straight doubleheader today. Pretty much. Well that's a good question because the other game was the Detroit game. That was rained out yesterday the White Sox in Detroit. I don't know if they're going to make that up later on or not because they'll face each other again. I heard an interesting thing from a technical standpoint uh, for our fans out there and the reason they do that is to stay out of the ESPN game of the week window. Correct the national window. Yep. But to stay out of the national window on Sundays and even Saturdays with some of the net some of the games being televised nationally. So if the teams decide to play a day night doubleheader you have to get permission uh, from to permission to televise the second game if it's a night game on Sunday. Outside two balls and one strike. Well that's what the networks pay the big bucks for to be the only game in town when they're on TV. Ramos swung at the first pitch his first time up and he grounded out to second. It was after a high cutter. High fastball and it's two and two. Come on everybody get into it a little bit. Two balls two strikes one out. And a good curveball again. Swung on and missed. Second strikeout. There you go. <laughs> That's the payoff. Second strikeout for Correa. You can see the rotation. Get that. You call that the uh, spiked, spiked curveball. Yeah. That's a very nice curveball. Late break, straight down. Twelve to six. Using that fingernail. Spiked or knuckled, knuckle curve, something like that. I'll find out. I think the spiked one is if the index finger is on it. The knuckle one is if the middle fingers. Did Cole Hamels throw that? Cole may throw semblance of that, yeah. Well, back in the day, Don Sutton used to throw a curveball with one finger. Get more rotation. Yes, you do. You. Just grip it with that middle finger and keep the index finger off of the ball. Mike Musina, who, gosh, he's borderline Hall of Famer, he used to throw knuckle curve. Knuckle yeah, curve. knuckle curve. One ball, one strike to Robinson. Pretty good location on that sinker right there. Must have been just off the plate. They tried it again, and it's ball four. So Robinson walks. It's the first walk issued by Correa. And Dan Uglis coming up. So Tom for the second game of the doubleheader Paul yeah. Emmel the home plate umpire is He's done off. after this game You're right do the they bring in another umpire to do the home game no see the home plate yes he's Sean Barber the first base umpire right now yep he's the extra guy so Jerry Meals is off for game one so Jerry comes in to do home plate correct I got you ground ball back toward the middle Hernandez was shaded that way. And he's going to be safe at first base. Cesar just took a little extra time to get rid of that baseball. And Dan Ugla was hustling up the line. 
just a little extra time. I think he had a little moment of thought there to go to second base with it to flip it to second base realize he couldn't then. You know just the normal throw he, he really didn't hurry it to first base and ugly hustled. And that's right where we talked about putting a guy in the shift was yeah. last at bad but there wasn't anybody on first base at that time. Right, last at bad. You're right though ugly did move I mean that. You looked up and he was right on the back. So now Desmond. A little precarious spot now for Correa with two on and two outs here in the fourth. Curve ball grounded toward the hole. Picked up by Galvis. Throws to third and they didn't get to the bag in time. And the bases are now loaded. Well, you know, not a bad decision by Freddie. Freddie would have had to have made a real long throw off balance either the first or second. And I think he had it in his mind to just to run it over to third to Mikel Franco at third base right here. He, you seen momentum's going right there, and, and where the problem happened is Mikel didn't run to the bag, find the bag, run to the bag, and find the bag with his right foot. He kind of kept he he backed up toward third base and and kept his eye on Freddie and did not find the bag. I'm not sure how they scored that. Scored an infield hit. And now Michael Taylor, he singled his first time up. Some wicked movement on that pitch, and it's yeah. one ball, no strike. Michael Taylor should get a steady diet of breaking balls in this at bat right here. Until you have to throw him a fastball because he, he can hit a fastball. Have not seen him look very good on breaking balls. Well, and getting back to the play by Freddie Galvis, that is the only play he had. Yeah. And it's a tough read for a third baseman because you kind of get caught off guard, like you're the expert at third base. Well, you know, actually, probably would have made a a an effort to my left to get the ball. Now, I mean, I probably would have realized that I can't get it, and I probably wouldn't have been there. <laughs> <laughs> Because you know if the, third, if the third baseman doesn't cut it off, you probably you definitely don't have a play. But it was, you know, the shortstop's ball right off. But I'm not sure. You know, you just got to sprint to third if you don't go after the ball and try to find the bag and become almost a first baseman. Just a crazy play, as was the one previous. One ball, one strike to Taylor. Fouls it away. It's one and two. Let's see if Correa can work out of this here. He's got the bases loaded. One ball, two strikes. There's nowhere to put Taylor. Otherwise, they could work around him for Strasburg. Offered at it, but it's two and two. Good block by Cameron Rupp. Cameron is uh, really impressed the Phillies over the last uh, month. You know, you you might they're going to share share duties. I'm sure today, but you might say, would, would you not that the Maybe Cameron Rupp's our number one catcher right now. I think yeah, I think he's leading that way as long as he keeps hitting and playing defense the way he is. He's caught more than Carlos has the last couple weeks. 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. Step on the plate. Finish the strikeout off. And the side is retired. Three strikeouts for Kevin Correa. He works out of a predicament here in the fourth inning. No runs. Two infield hits, three men left, and his curveball has been wicked good here this afternoon. He's got a lot of movement on it, and he picks up another strikeout.
Brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies, and by the Quality Plus Sports Stores. Go further. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning here at Citizens Bank Park. Very comfortable day. Quite breezy. Matt's not even breaking a sweat running around with the camera today. Well, maybe a little bit. Michael Franco will lead things off. He popped out to third. Foul territory is first, first time up. And he whacks that one to third. Espinosa backs up on it. It's a nice play right there. Yes, it was. I mean, you saw a couple of things there. Excellent hands, good footwork, and a rifle arm. A rifle over the top arm. Kind of caught in between on the ground ball. Shows off an arm. Espinosa, an ex shortstop. A good shortstop at that too. Now he's a right fielder. Yeah. <laughs> now he can play softball with the best of them as an extra fielder. Howard struck out his first time up, and he takes on the inside corner. It's 0-1. Boy, when he's on, he does have a good changeup to go along with that fastball. He does. The only problem is he doesn't throw it in to anyone but Ryan Howard. He's thrown four changeups today, four to Ryan Howard. Make it five coming. Outside, one and two. Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but his last outing, 65% fastballs, 31% curveballs? Correct. And four, less than 5% changeups. And no sliders? None. Howard bounces it foul. He doesn't throw the slider anymore. He he came up with the slider in Arizona one day, uh, threw it well, then all of a sudden now his average versus the slider is 500. So I kind of put that on the back burners. And strike three call. Three strikeouts for Strasburg. That one coming on the curveball. Well, Jeff Francoeur is bringing the lumber. Brought to you by Yellowwood Brand Pressure Treated Pie. That he is. Plus, Jim McCall is going to jump all over that first pitch fastball from Strasburg and hit the ball to left field, deep to left field. On the board, one nothing. That's the only run of today's ball game for either team. Frank Poor with his fifth home run of the year, and he takes a fastball low. <laughs> Strasburg is making his second start since coming back from the disabled list. That one is pulled toward third. It hits the bag. Fielded by Espinosa. Hand-eye coordination. Ball can't be handled by Robinson. Well, we're waiting for this scoring play here, huh? <laughs> they said. Great reactions by Espinosa over third base. Tommy, you got good eyes if you saw that hit the bag. I thought it hit just next to the bag. Just next to it. And it's still a great pick. Yeah, it, 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 it kind of bit and jumped up, and he had his chance to really show off his arm again and needed a pick by the first baseman. They have scored it in E5. Must to hit one of the divots uh, from the cleat marks from the spikes in the dirt. One ball, no strikes to Cody Ashy. The only reason why I thought maybe they might give it a base hit was because the first base umpire. Didn't signal nothing. Which would lead you to believe that he might have been safe. Well, he, he was a dead duck well, yeah. at first, but I agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the play is I mean, a good throw would have gotten him easily, correct? Absolutely, yes. Right, yeah. But then yet the question is did the the ball, the, the strength of the hit, the location of the hit, the difficulty of getting to the ball create the bad throw? No. 
He caught it cleanly. He came up, and you know he had all he had to do was throw a strike the first, and didn't. So I think it's the right call. Yeah, he throws it in the dirt. I mean, I wasn't lying. I was bet. You know, trying to get Frenchy another knock. <laughs> Tell you what, he might have been better off uh, backhand in that ball at first base. Yeah, they pick. They might have been able to even give the error to the first baseman. Didn't really look like it hit the dirt. One ball and two strikes to Cody Ashy. Ashy is popped out to short. It is only at bat. See, here's where I like to see Cody just back out of the batter's box. Making him stand there way too long. You know what I mean, Matt? You yep. agree? Cody has a tendency to hit at the speed that the pitcher wants him to hit. I don't know whether that makes any sense to you or not, but you had to have your own sort of uh, metronome or tempo or feeling for uh, getting into your stance, your presence in the plate, and, and you have to be the kind of hitter that. Going to hit at your rate. You know, I'm going to hit at my speed. I'm going to hit when I'm ready to hit, not at your speed. At my you speed. dictate. Yes. Of course, when Bob Gibson pitched, <laughs> whatever you want, Mr. Gibson, <laughs> you had a tendency to hit more to his speed, as you did with Nolan Ryan, Tom Seaver. But most people, I hit at my my rate. Why is that? Would they buzz you with the fastball? <laughs> if you wouldn't get in there quick enough, or if you took too much time? I don't know. It just happens. Uh, Starstruck. It was well, hypnotic. no, like like you know when I when the last uh, pitch uh, he made him stand there, and it was almost like Cody was. Should I take another practice pump? Should I not? And, and, and strikes him out. The fourth strikeout for Strasburg. He ratcheted up the tempo there. The high fastball. Please leave one and we will go to the fifth. Now for the Jeep Stump the Fans Trivia Quiz answer. All right, guys, here we go. Who are the three members of the 1976 Phillies that hit 300 or better with a minimum of 400 at bats? Well, some old buddies of mine. Matt, you want me to handle this one? Yeah, you go right ahead. I knew it was Gary Maddox right out of the shoot. I believe Gary hit close to 330 and almost maybe second in the league there. 330 year. exactly. Wow. Yep. And then, of course, not many people would know, but Greg Luzinski. Stayed right around 300. You he said a, you said what he was at. You said before. I thought was it was it? more like 304, 305 correct, that year. 304. See now, people, good recollection, yeah, right? Excellent. I didn't look that up. Now the last one you helped me with, I wasn't sure that my old uh, winter ball roommate and close friend Jay Johnstone was on the team that year, but in fact he was, and that that boy could hit Jay Johnstone. 318, he hit that. Day. Wow. 
Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. As a team, you guys hit 272. <laughs> that was third best in all Major League Baseball. Now, in comparison, the Nationals are fifth best right now in the National League. They're at 259. Kansas City Royals are the best, aren't they? I believe you're right. Just yep. 276 or something like that. Swing it a miss and another strikeout for Correa. That's his fourth. As Strasburg goes down swinging. Another guy that was pretty close to uh, 300 as a hitter that year was Terry Harmon, who hit 295 in 42 games. I'm going to stick my neck out here with a with a number on that year. You just just you know I got to bring up the four home run game in in Chicago mm -hmm. only because after that game I think we won like 50 out of 63 games. We'll Something really close we'll to that. Give it a look. It's we'll give it a look. crazy number. And we ran away with the division that year. 50 out of 63? That's my guess. <laughs> I had that number in my head. That's a lot of. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's Carl, can we look at that? Can we look and see what the Phil's did now, after? You know, you're probably going to make me out to a big liar here, but well, I don't it know has why to be I have that in my brain. Because your memory's pretty good with that stuff. <laughs> you remember what you hit in that year, too, right? No, I haven't any idea. 262. I thought that's what you said. No, no. I, I said that probably you oh, were talking okay. about 300 hitters. Then don't include me in that group. And your buddy Dave Cash hit 284 that year. One ball, one strike to Denard Span. And a line drive, base hit into right field. Frank Cor will play it off the wall, and Span on his way to second, thinking three. Frank Cor bobbled it, and then it loosens out of his hand as he tries to chuck it to the infield. That'll be a two base hit and an error to Frank Cor, his third of the year. Well, that's unusual. Jeff really is a really sharp defensive outfielder, and in the haste to get it back into the infield, dropped it twice. Ooh, Ryan Howard just misses it. You see, hits that cement, the very bottom comes up. Whoa! Bar of soap. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I'm laughing, not at him, but uh, you know, I hate some laughing with him. But that that's going to get some time, I think, on Everywhere. A national <laughs> a national TV network that we all know. <laughs> well, move span over to third, and now the Phillies play the infield in here in the top of the fifth inning in a one nothing game. Yeah, with one out, we uh, the miscue allowed span to get to third. Was like a bar of soap, though. Many a player has done that. Yes, sir. Many a quarterback has done that. Espinosa has popped out, and he's also grounded out. Outside, one ball, one strike. We go back to that 1976 year since I'm with you guys. How about this? Am I wrong or right on this? Luzinski, Boa, Boone, myself, Maddox, and Carlton all made the All-Star team. I know there were five guys on the All-Star team. In Philadelphia. And, and the All-Star game was yeah. here. Out towards shallow left field. Ashy is under it span tagging as she's got it the throw to the plate is not in time excellent slide by span to make sure it wasn't close sack fly and it's a 1 1 ball game well I'll let you handle that from an outfielder's perspective <laughs> but I know Cody might have been able to get a little bit more momentum going toward home plate yeah he caught the ball almost flat footed you, you try to get behind the ball as much as possible, and you want him to catch up a little lower, uh, closer to your head. You know, the, the rainbow throw is fine because there's a man on third base. It doesn't matter if you miss your, your cutoff spot. But you want to try to get it back behind as much as you can, and the momentum will give you a stronger throw. Well, that RBI for Espinosa is 22nd of the year. So it's a 1-1 game here in the bottom of the fifth. Bryce Harper's up with nobody on. Right now, that is an unearned run charged to the line of Correa. 
but honestly, the, the bottom line is that the ball is hit deep enough. I don't think Cody Ash would have had a. And Spans, uh, he, Spans a runner, too. Yeah, he wouldn't have had a chance. Side. It's one ball, one strike. So you gave me the official Boa Cash, Luzinski, Schmidt, and Boone. Gary Maddox, huh? Did not make the All Star team? Yeah, according to this list, Gary did not make the All Star team that year. Oliver, Pete Rose, Tony Perez, Shake and Bake, with the Cardinals at the time. Outside, three and one. They wore those bicentennial hats. And box, were they box hats? They're pill box hats? Is that what they're? The Pirates wore in 79 also? If that was the year that Richard Nixon. Walked through the clubhouse and said hello to everybody. <laughs> Was Nixon president? Yes, uh, somebody here that. I can't help you there. <laughs> 76, he was uh, not president. No. But he may have been, a, he was a big baseball fan. So Harper will walk with two men down, and Wilson Ramos is 0 for 2, was grounded out and struck in. Matt, I can't help you here. <laughs> Who was the Prime Minister of Canada at that point? <laughs> can't help us there either, huh? All right, Correa has given up a run. That one's fouled back toward the Hall of Fame club. Ooh. I think somebody may have. Uh, we shouldn't need to start talking about what we're going to have in between in, uh, between games. No, no, I got that handled. Okay. That's down at the Diamond Club. I'm not. Um, that looks pretty good. Over to shortstop. Galvis charges. Has it? And he'll throw Ramos out. Side is retired. An unearned run scores. Charged to the line of Kevin Correa. We'll move to the bottom of the fifth inning. All evened up at one. Nationals and Phils tied at one. Home run by Jeff Francoeur is the run for the Phillies. Well, as we mentioned in the outset, this is a traditional double header. Two nine inning games. Game two will start about a half hour, 35 minutes uh, after the conclusion of game number one. And Murph, I'm sure there's some folks that are going to stay for both of the ball games today. 
Well, Tom, you're absolutely right. There are some folks, and I happen to find three of them. This is the Roman family. Say hello to Colleen and Rusty and Dad Ed down there at the end. And uh, they are definitely staying for both games. They uh, are season ticket holders here in 417. And Colleen, never a doubt for you guys, right? Never a doubt. You never leave early? Never leave early. Uh, well, on occasion, maybe, but normally Rarely. never. Rarely. It, you know, it, you, when you heard uh, Rusty was going to be two, um, you know, it kind of changes your day. Obviously, you were planning on coming to the first game anyway, but now you're here all day. But uh, you, you guys love baseball. Well, we love baseball. Uh, you, you know that, Murph. I mean, we see you all over the place. I saw you down in Baltimore a couple weeks ago. Um, but, no, we, we, we love the Phillies. Uh, we go down to Clearwater every year. Um, and, no, we just we love the game. And a chance to spend some time with your old dad, too. Yep, dad, dad, dad's, a, dad's a big baseball fan, and dad's brought me up on baseball, so, yeah. Okay, now there is an added catch to all of this, and uh, that is that uh, you're still dealing with what? No electric. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tabernacle. No electricity in Tabernacle, and so we have electricity here at the exactly. ballpark. And, uh, and, and, cold beer. And, cold, and some cold beer. All the comforts of home right here in Section 417. Well, we're going to check back in with you guys in a little while. But uh, for now, enjoy the game, and uh, hopefully you bring us some, some runs, some luck, and we'll get to today. Guys, we'll send it back to you. It is remarkable that there are still places in New Jersey from the storm the other day, and I guess even in Pennsylvania, where there's no electricity. Well, Murph, where are they sitting? Uh, no one around them. The private uh, section? <laughs> it is. Well, it's section 417. And th these are their season tickets. And I'll tell you, we are just up from home plate. Um, and uh, it is an absolutely perfect view. You guys moved from section, what? You, you... 204 to 417. 204 to 417 because, uh, A, they wanted to be in the shade. But also, <laughs> you, can't, you can't beat the view. The view is wonderful. And uh, today, yeah, they're, they've Bob got... Bob Euchre around there anymore? <laughs> <laughs> they've, got, they've got some extra seats here today. But uh, who knows? By game two, it could all be filled up, Mike. Good. We'll wait and see. Make sure you say hello to Ed for us. <laughs> I, I will. I'll be He's sure He's concentrating to. on the game off hard. <laughs> no balls and one strike to Freddie Galvis. No, by the way, just before we go any further, Gerald Ford was the president. Yeah, thank and you, Matt. Pierre Trudeau was the uh, prime minister. Pierre campaign. Trudeau, is that who it was? Yeah, so oh, we're good to go. That a boy. This is your history lesson for the day. Brought to you by your... Me. <laughs> Brought to you by Matt Stairs. Who is the vice president? Mm. You got that one there, Matt? There you go again. He's talking to Siri. No balls, two strikes to Galvis outside. One ball, two strikes. Galvis Nelson struck out. Nelson Rockefeller. Swing and a miss. So, back to back strikeouts. In fact, three in a row for Strasburg. Phillies are offering family packs for select weekend games here in 2015. Four tickets for Hatfield Philly Frank Dollar Dogs. Well, I guess four Hatfield Philly Franks, not Dollar Dogs. And four Cokes for $100. A great value for families available on select weekend dates. And you can find out those dates by going to Phillies.com. Here is Kevin Correa. He grounded up to shortstop his first time up. He's just getting fed a lot of fastballs yeah. here. Back to back 96 <laughs> fastballs. One and two. Nationals have not announced their game two starter for today. And a lot of it was going to, going to be dependent on what Strasburg did here this afternoon. And he just struck out. Hey, that, that's four straight 96 mile an hour fastball. Mm. Exactly. Another one. Four straight. Feeling oh. pretty good. Four straight strikeouts dating back to the last uh, out of the fourth. And now we'll go to the sixth.
Independence Blue Cross Phillies of the Week are finishing off wins with absolute confidence. Just over a year from his Major League debut, Giles has taken the ball and fired his way into solidifying the eighth inning roll. His career ERA hovers around one and a half, and he's setting things up for Jonathan Papabon, who is closing the door with the best of them. The all-time Philly saves leader has been nearly perfect in save situations over the last calendar year. His ERA is among the best in the closer category, and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Top of the sixth inning. Well, Phillies get a run or two. We might be able to see Giles and Papelbon maybe close this one out. Sun has popped back out here as we begin the top of the sixth. Phillies and the Nationals all even at one. Clint Robinson will lead things off against Kevin Correa. He's been sound here today. Correa has. He's allowed one unearned run. That's it. Robinson has walked. He's also grounded out. Well, I stand corrected on that record after <laughs> the Chicago game in 1976. It was, in fact, 46 and 17, not 50 and 63. It's still a pretty good record. Instead of 50 Close and to 13. 30 games over 500. Yeah, instead of 50 and 13, you're 46 and 17 during that stretch. Pretty good. Very good. Raise your hand if you'll take that. Outside again, 3 0. The Robinson, Ugla, and Desmond. Phillies have bullpen action behind Correa as he begins this sixth inning. He has thrown 82 pitches so far. And everything's been pretty comfortable for him. Three and two to Robinson. Jenmar Gomez is warming up in the pen. Ball right down the middle of the plate. Maybe a little high. I was kind of watching him wind up and deliver the pitch. I think he looks so much like Schilling <laughs> when he. Oh, you think so? Wind up in his delivery. Yeah, right there. See? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is. I That's guess, a strike. I guess strike. It's, it's even below the belt. No, well, he catches it below the belt. It's still a strike. Yes. At least it seemed that way. I think Robinson was kind of surprised he wasn't punched out. Look out. That one is flying out toward the concourse. It's no balls in one strike. I'm going to figure out that swing with Dan Ugla. A little tardy there. Normally a pull hitter. I can imagine that he was trying to hit that ball. In the hole between first and second. I don't know if he has it in him to do it. <laughs> that's my point. <laughs> but that's some serious late tardiness on a fastball first pitch. He pulls that one through the hole on the left side, a base hit. So that puts runners on first and second for Washington. And then for Ugla, that's a second hit. And that'll bring Ian Desmond to the plate. I don't know. Is hook a fastball there, Matt? Or is that change up. Change up. Yep. Out in front of a change up fastball over the dugout. And, and as they say, up. don't speed up the batter's yeah. uh, bat. Uh, he just he just hit your fastball over the dugout. Now throw one a little slower so that it puts him right where he wants to be. All right. What do you do with Desmond here? I mean, I can't imagine they're going to ask him to bunt with the bottom of the order coming up. Uh, I wouldn't think so. I mean, if Desmond bunts in this situation, then Taylor uh, Taylor's going to be walked intentional to get to Strasburg. I, I mean, that's the thought process I would do. And then hopefully you can get Span out with uh, with two outs. 
I'd go into the pitcher. I'd put the hold on and let him hold the ball and hold the ball, hold the ball until he's hacking. Or throw it and see what he's doing. <laughs> he's hacking. If, if you hold it in your stretch, uh, sometimes the batter will flinch or, or give it away that he's bunting. If he doesn't, you know he's not. Well, I, well you know he's not now. Well, you know he's not now because the, the, the third base coach is giving signs and Desmond's not even looking. Yeah, he's in the box ready to go and the signs are being thrown out toward the base runners. Fly ball center field. Revere comes running in. Robinson, I don't know if he's going to be able to tag. He's just going to draw the throw. One away. Good pitch. He got it in on him. Set your alarm tomorrow morning and wake up with Rob Ellis, Julian Mealy, Barrett Brooks, and Sarah Baker for Breakfast on Broad, presented by Virtua Joint Replacement Institute. Weekday mornings from 6 until 8, over on the Comcast Network and streaming live on breakfastonbroad.com. Well, now you got to watch your first ball fastball to Taylor again with men on base. Well, Smitty, you hit the nail right on the head last at that bat with Taylor. Steady diet of curveballs. He did. He got four in a row and struck him out. So. That ball must not be in the sight of Paul Emmel. No, that was a that was a, a higher pitch than the Robinson. You think so? Yeah, I mean the one of Robinson was right down the middle. I was getting greedy, Matt. Yeah, that's all right. We're loud. One ball, no strikes to Taylor. Outside, two and zero. Oh. It's back to back cutters. Yeah, and you get to a certain point where you have to throw a fastball, and this might be that point. I don't know. I think you can still be careful. Strasburg's on deck. Are they going to come with another cutter? Well, he gave him the low one. Paul Emmel, the home plate umpire, is a taller umpire. He's got a very distinct uh, strike call. Here comes your fastball, Schmitty. Yeah, he had his fastball right there. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me this one's going to be spinning. Well, the runners on first and second and one man down. And he fouls it at the plate. He just barely got a piece of it. Way so that's front. a good that's a good curveball, Matt. Tommy, that, that's got some serious uh, downspin on it, a tight rotation, and that's a pitch he struck him out on the pre in the previous at bat with the bases loaded. It's funny. I guarantee you, Taylor's got that pitch on his mind too, right? But you just keep throwing it until he can hit it. This looks like they're set up with the. There it is again. Well, now you got to sort of outthink him with the count three balls and two strikes, or put it in a perfect spot. With Deekman now joining, Jenmar Gomez warming up in the pen. Well, thanks, Smitty. Three balls, two strikes, curveball. I challenge him. What the heck? We're talking eight hole hitter. And he lines that one over the glove of Franco down the left field line. One run is in. Ugla is going to third. He'll be held there, and the Nationals take the lead. I can't believe he threw him with that. <laughs> But then, folks out there, you see what you see what this game's all about. We're here talking, and I'm I'm dumbfounded. I don't know. I said I challenge him, and now, you know, I was dead wrong. Well, I think if the location is good, that's a cutter that stays in or half. He drives the ball to left field, and we've talked about he's been a very good fastball hitter. Uh, you know, three games we've seen, well, two games in the rainout. Well, he can hit a fastball, Taylor. We've said that the whole game, and you, we, 
you got to give him credit. He fouled off that curveball, that nasty curveball, to get him to get himself that fastball. And he rips one into the corner to give the Nationals the lead. Jen Mar Gomez is going to take over for Kevin Correa. For our GMC Precision play of the game. This came back in the third inning. Strasburg's up there trying to bunt, and Rupp just cuts it off before it can go foul. Well, Rupp does a very nice job, tags him, and as he's throwing to second base, first of all, not a very good bunt, but heads up play right there, and as he throws, he's yelling to let the tag, 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 but bottom line was two U sack bunt. Well, Jason's here at his first Phillies game, and he can actually stay for a second Phillies game if he wants to as well. Welcome, Jason. <laughs> Jenmar Gomez will be the new pitcher for the Phils. 32nd game. Gomez on to face Strasburg with the infield in. Span is in the on deck circle. They got Deekman warming up, possibly for him. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. It's 0 1. Strasburg is 0 for 1, sacrificed his first time up, struck out his last time. Off the plate, Hernandez is charging, the runners hold. And there are two outs. And here comes Pete McCannon. That's going to be it for Jenmar Gomez. So he faced one. And now they'll go to the lefty Jake Diekman to face Denard Span. So another pitching change here at Citizens Bank Park. One batter faced, one batter retired for Gomez here in the sixth.
All MLB.TV serves up real-time highlights and pitch tracking info on your out-of-market fantasy players. Live or on demand on over 400 devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Get MLB.TV today. Two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Runners on second and third. And the third pitcher used today by the Phillies will be left-hander Jake Diekman. Warming up to come on to face Denard Spann. Spann is double today. He's one for three overall. He scored the first of the two runs for the Nationals. Tom, I will make a, a, a quick point before Diekman gets ready to throw. Yeah. Really surprised. They had second and third situation with one out. Strasburg was hitting. I'm very surprised they didn't go on contact because... You st now you have second and third with two out, and even if they throw ugly out of home, one it opens up a hole first base for Span, and you still have a man on third base with two outs. So very surprising that they didn't go for contact with Strasburg hitting. Now, do you think even if they didn't go on contact, that Ugla, if he read that better, could have scored on that high chopper? No, because in his mind the ball had to go through the infield, so he was just freezing no matter what. Okay. Going on contact, you're still going to get thrown out of home, but you still have first and third situation with two outs. 1-0 pitch to Span, and he takes high. It's 2-0. No, and here's that grounder right here. That's a chopper off home plate. Dan Ugla had no intentions of going home unless that ball was driven to the infield. You know, Ugla knew that he probably could have scored if he was going on contact. Now that's not his decision, right? That's, that's absolutely... Matt Williams' decision of that, that there. Two and zero to Denard Span. Span is hitting 190 against left-handed pitching this year, and hitting over 340 against right-handed pitching. Just walked him to load up the bases. And Danny Espinosa will bat right handed against Deakman. Well, not the ideal situation for Jake. So the switch hitting Espinosa will bat right handed. He's hitting 333 right handed, 239 left handed this season. You see his numbers with his career, in his career with the bases loaded. That one's way outside off the glove of Rupp, and here comes Ugla Hill score standing. 3 to 1, Washington on top. Not much you can do right here and for Cameron. It's supposed to be a it looks like a fastball. No, I think it was a like a helicopter slider, like a backdoor slider okay. that kind of spun up out of his hand. Well, they have squirted a pass ball and not a wild pitch. Popped him up. Ryan Howard over at first base is under it. And the side is retired. Two runs do score. Both runs charged to the line of Kevin Correa, who wasn't bad today. Five and a third. He's charged with three. Two of those runs are unearned.
is brought to you by Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. By Jefferson, where health is all we do. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW or visit Jefferson.edu and buy your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer or visit DelValHondaDealers.com today. Phillies down 3-1. They had a 1-0 lead for a good part of this game, but then the Nationals scored an unearned run in the fifth and two runs in the sixth. One of those runs was unearned. So for Kevin Correa, five and a third, seven hits and three runs, one of which was earned. So now you got to deal with Strasburg, who was humming along since allowing that home run to Frank Cor. He has struck out the last four batters he's faced. He's only allowed uh, one base runner since the home run by Frank Cor. That was Frank Cor reaching on an error by the third baseman. And Revere hits it foul. One ball, one strike to Revere. Nationals have spent 22 games or 22 days in first place this year. They're three and a half games ahead of the Mets in the National League East. As that one is chopped toward the right side. And there's one out. Cesar Hernandez is coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, thank you very much, Tom. Well, it's time for our T Mobile game changer, and we're going to concentrate on the Williamsport Cross Cutters, of course, in the New York Penn League and the Phil's organization. How about this? They started out their season this year 8 and 0. Oh, that's the best start in team history. That eight game winning streak is tied for the third longest in their team history. We have three players in the top 10 in batting average in the league, 12 stolen bases in eight games. That's best in the league, and a team ERA of 173. So, an off to a terrific start of the cross cutters all under the watchful eye of first year manager Pat Borders. He hasn't lost yet. He's doing, <laughs> doing a pretty good job. I would He's gonna say. take it hard though when he yeah. does wind up losing a game. What a way to start the season. It is an excellent way to start the year. We probably should know this but I wonder if Jose Pulo Pujols is at all related to Albert Pujols. Albert's real first name is Jose. It's Jose Alberto. Those kids are thinking, man, this is easy, this professional baseball thing. They're absolutely breaking down there. One ball, two strikes to Cesar Hernandez. Anybody know what a cross cutter is? Well, that's a good question. Murph and I have both done the dinner before. I remember seeing the logo. We're going to research that one. Okay. I think Carl's already on it. Three balls and two strikes. Hit foul. Cross cutter is a lumberjack. That makes sense just from the logo. We go up to you know each and every year to the the, the hot stove tour. Yeah. I mean, William sure. Sports one of those places that we go. And the caravan. The caravan. That's right. The caravan. And what a great place. Their dinners are really some of the best. The way they do everything. Cesar Hernandez hits that out toward left. Michael Taylor is under it. Two outs. Sunday, July 19th, when the Phillies take on the Miami Marlins, all fans 15 and older will receive the Pennsylvania Auto Theft Prevention Authority travel mug. You can get tickets by going to phillies.com. There is the travel mug. A glimpse of it. Here's Mike Tell Franco, who's 0 for his last 10. He's got a new bat up there. Because his bat was broken in his earlier at bat. Now it's 
outside one ball one strike. Can you imagine throwing a 90 mile an hour changeup. <laughs> it does seem like he's getting stronger. Yeah, I noticed last inning I pointed out those four 96 mile an hour fastballs. There you go. That one's at 98. It's going to drop for a hit for Franco. It hits the small wall. And Mike Kell is going to hold up at first base. There you go. That ends at 0 for 10 for That's him. right. Fast one side beats him. But strong enough to muscle up the right field for a base hit. Get that big old knock. A lot of folks were wondering, all right, when Michael does struggle, because we saw him struggle early on, how will he get out of it? Like so he, that. Yeah, like he struggled <laughs> early on, but he wasn't hitting. Then he started hitting, you know, lights out. And now he has struggled in his last 10 at bats, and maybe this is a way for him to get out of it. Balls in one strike. In the dirt, 101. By the way, Williamsport used to be known as the logging capital of the world. Just to give a little history on why it's the cross cutters. Williamsport also used to have the fence was all oh. logs. Oh yeah? The whole way around. It's really tapping into that's their where, heritage. That's where the Mets used to play. Williamsport, yes, the Williamsport Mets, that's yeah. correct. Outside, two and one. Back when I was a senator. Did you ever play there? Yes, I did. So that was a double A franchise when you played, when you were a, Har a Harrisburg senator. Yep. Hmm. There's a different view. That's a great view. Ninety seventy fouls it back. Two balls, two strikes to Howard. And actually, one of the—I uh, can't think of his name right now. I'm having a brain cramp. But he—he uh, he got married on the mound. Uh, and actually, FB Santangelo, broadcaster for the uh, the Nats, we were invited to the wedding on the field. And I can't think of his name. I will. Low ball three. Franco will be off and running on this pitch. Good take by Ryan there, Cutter. Down and in, they're hard to lay off of with two strikes. Franco goes, pitches outside, ball four. That puts runners on first and second with two outs, and Frank four. Will be the batter. Well, boys, I think they're going to be a little careful with that first ball, fastball. And make it a hook here. <laughs> he did start him off fastball, first pitch strike, his second at bat as well. Lead off first and second. Oh, he does challenge him on oh. the fastball, but it was away. And it's 0 and 1. Nobody warming up in the bullpen for the Nationals. If they don't use Tanner Roark in this uh, first game, then he's probably going to be the game two starter for Washington. At least that's what we've been told, as little as we have been told. In the dirt, 1 and 1. Blocked by Ramos there, very timely as well. Uh, moved both of those runners up, put the tying run on second base. Great, uh, great block. A nasty breaking ball in the dirt. By the way, Tom, it was Jeremy Burnett's. Jeremy Burnett's. Big left-handed power hitter for the Mets. Yep. And you went to his wedding. 
<laughs> no choice. Down and away, two and one. 90 pitches for Strasburg. Don't forget game two, and we'll have coverage of it. It'll be coming up about 30 minutes after this one is finished. Got to get your game prep done pretty quickly. Day night doubleheader, you have a lot more time. Three balls and one strike to Frank Core. 99 on that fastball. Real quick, I want to thank Bulls Barbecue for that great service we've gotten our. Is that where you went? Not even. I just made it. I just texted no, Bulls. got up before. I thought you went back to see if it was there. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was you, uh, had to go out in the hall for a second, but uh, <laughs> texted Bull and uh, geez, within 10 minutes it was here. There's there a you go. out towards center field. That's going to drop for a hit. Frank goes around third, heading for home. He's going to score. It's a one-run game. Frank Core has both RBIs today. That's a good at bat. Good result. Uh, that. It was a two and one fastball that he laid off of and he got the call. Matt, was that fastball inside? It jammed him a little bit? Yep, it was. Fastball that ran inside on his hands. Missed his target. But French did a nice job. It's a nice swing right there. It's a powerful swing. Well, he's been a good addition to this Phillies club. They haven't overused him at all. And each time. He doesn't go more than two games without contributing something when he's out there. So a visit to the mound. Steve McCaddy, after 25 pitches, is out to chat with Strasburg. There's still two men down. All this is with two outs. And Cody Ashey will be the hitter. David Carpenter, the former Brave and Yankee, is warming up in the bullpen for the Nationals. Well, in between the two games of this doubleheader, Ricky Vitalico will give his analysis of game one and talk about the game two matchup. Only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Severino Gonzalez will pitch for the Phillies, and we're not 100% sure who is going to throw for the Nationals. Tanner Roark is on the table. Right now it's Cody Ashey who's up and Ashey fouls the first pitch fastball away. It's 0 and 1. Two pitches. Mm -hmm. A couple of pretty good fastballs to hit as well. Strasburg misses spot on both. Now battle mode. <laughs> Look at Ramos' reaction. Ooh. We got a call right there. Let's see if we can do something with it. Wow. <laughs> Pulls that one toward first, and it's backhanded by Robinson. And the side is retired. He was hanging out over toward the line. The ball kind of died as it went out toward him. The Phillies do get a run back on the single by Frank Core. They leave two. We'll go to the top of the seventh in a one run game.
Time now for your Delaware Valley Honda dealers game summary. The Phillies trail at three to two as we move to the bottom, uh, top of the seventh inning. Steven Strasburg, seven strikeouts over six. Jeff Francoeur has both ribbies for the Phillies. Jeff McCray wasn't bad today. Three, earned, three runs, one earned. He pitched well. Less than five and a third. So now Deekman stays in. Deekman allowed one inherited runner to score. And he gets Harper to wave at the first pitch. It's 0 and 1. Harper is one for two with a walk. Just challenged a 97 on that fastball, and it's 0 and 2. Harper's gone to a different bat. Must be a lighter bat versus a harder thrower. That one's popped up. Shallow left. It'll carry out toward Ashy. These lucky fans are tonight's or today's Citizen Seven. They were to see a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal, and that's helping you bank better. Citizens Bank. Would you guys go to a lighter bat depending on the pitcher? Absolutely. Uh, might be an ounce, you know, maybe you go from a 33 to a 32, 32 and a half to a 32. Uh, but you can feel the difference. Yeah. I go to more lead <laughs> in that on deck circle, too, sometimes. I, I've been known to swing everything that's weighted uh, in that on deck circle against certain pitchers. I like my bat to feel light. Went two, or should be uh, one and zero to Ramos, who's hold for three. Matt, would you go to a lighter bat? Uh, no, I use the exact same bat versus all the pitch except for Kevin Brown. I would swing a 35, 34, because I wanted to get that barrel through the zone as long as I could because of a sinker. So you would use a heavier bat against him. Heavier bat versus Kevin Brown. 35, 34. And what normally that's a big bat. That's a big pass. Yeah, I, I had a hard time getting it over my shoulder. Third at bat, I was tired. Well, he had movement. There was no doubt about that. The average bat nowadays is probably 34, maybe 33 and a half, 31, 32 ounces. Those bats are like the. You know the furniture, the legs on your dining room table. Um, <laughs> That's a good comparison. Three balls, one strike. Yeah, there's ball four. Ramos draws a walk. Second walk issued by Deacon. Every time the Phillies pitchers retire, the opposition one, two, three Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider. Of the Philadelphia Phillies. Tyler Moore is going to pinch hit for Clint Robinson with the lefty on the mound. Well, Jake somehow has to get through uh, these free passes, you know, coming out of the pen if he wants to get back to what he was for the first, I would say, two thirds of last season. Just a lot of walks, unfortunately for him. I need a visit. Good call. So Bob McClure out to talk to Jake Diekman. Now this is a mechanical visit, isn't it? He's just saying, okay, you're you're flying open or you're doing your Doing this definitely that. that is is to break his bad momentum, you know, to just give him a second to, um, and regroup. Yeah, I'm sure it's a it's generally something mechanical. Uh, you you know, bend your front leg or you're staying too tall or you. Most of the time, it's you're opening your front shoulder too soon. Pitchers do a lot of the same things wrong that hitters do when they're not executing. Tyler Moore will take a strike if it's a. Uh, Oh, and one. And, and you know, when you visit the mound, you love to see the next Bam. thing happen. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? When you send a guy to the mound, 
He throws a perfect strike. Walk back to the dugout as the coach saying, "Yeah, I, see, I figured that out." What'd you tell him, Bob? He told him there's something right. Wow. This is what you call good morning, good afternoon, and good night with the 97 mile an hour fastball inside. Perfect placement. Well, an excellent pitch by Deekman, and now two outs with a runner at first. Side, it's 1 0. By the way, they are still finishing that suspended game up at City Field. It's in the 11th, and it's a 1 1 ball game. They'll play game two, just like the Phillies will, about a half hour or so afterward. That one's pulled through the vacant spot. <laughs> They're going to move him over there eventually. <laughs> through the shift spot. It's a three hit day for Dan Ugla. If you're interested in coming on an upcoming road trip for the Phillies, well, mark it down. August 6th through the 10th, when the Phillies go to San Diego to take on the Padres. Four nights, accommodations, brunch with us broadcasters, a tour of Petco Park, tickets to all three games in San Diego, plus a custom Phillies road trip polo shirt. Go to Phillies.com slash Phillies vacations or call 877-833-7326. Oh, double switch going on. Pete McCannon out to talk to the home plate umpire. He's going to take the baseball from Jake Deekman. Luis Garcia will come on to face Ian Desmond. Dominic Brown is in the play right. Frank Core goes to left. We'll tell you all about it when we return. Water is the new buzz around the water cooler. WB Mason offers free same day delivery of five gallon Blizzard Spring water bottles with no minimums or hidden fees. Dominic Brown in to play right field. He'll bat ninth. Jeff Francoeur moves from right field over to left field. Cody Ashey's afternoon is done. At least game one, it's, it's done. And Luis Garcia is on to face Ian Desmond. Desmond swings at the first pitch. It's a beautiful thing. A pop up near the mound. Galvis has it, but Howard's just a bit taller. And he makes the catch, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, two men left. It's time to stretch with the Phillies down one.
forget that's Colleen, Ed, and Rusty, the Romans who are here sitting behind home plate. They're going to be here for both ball games. There's going to be a bunch of fans that'll probably hang out, but those are Philly season ticket holders. Come on, Ed, stand up and dance a little bit. Colleen's trying to get into this game. <laughs> There's Tyler Moore who will take over at first base after pinch hitting. Steven Strasburg remains out there. And Strasburg will face the bottom of the Phillies order. It's Rupp, Galvis, and Dominic Brown, a game that's well within the Phillies' reach. See those jerseys that were given out today, the fanatic jerseys that those two youngsters are wearing, those three youngsters are wearing as we speak. Our seventh inning stretch comes to a close along with Matt Stairs, Mike Schmidt, and Greg Murphy. I'm Tom McCarthy. Don't forget, game two is coming up about a half hour after this one is over with. It's a good old fashioned doubleheader. And if you're uh, Dan Ugly, you want to play game two. If you're Jeff Rancor, you want to play game two. Folks will be busy in the press box. To your left with the microphone is Jay Dunn. He's the official scorer. Craig Hugner from the Phillies. PR staff. Greg Castriato also was making an important phone calls. He's walking in the press box <laughs> as Rupp takes a strike. It's 0 1. Strasburg approaching 100 pitches now, still throwing 96. Yeah, and without knowing the numbers, he's throwing more fastballs, isn't he? Doesn't he seem like he is right now? Yeah, he is. He's being more aggressive in the strike zone. He hasn't thrown very many change ups. Not as many curveballs either. He's basically been throwing a lot of fastballs. Well, Matt Williams has to be impressed by what he just saw coming out in the uh, bottom of the seventh, 96 96 fastball. Well, his last time out, he went five innings. He threw 94 pitches. There's Thornton, left handed specialist. Number 100 right here. 1 2 pitch to Rupp, and it's up high 2 and 2. Strasburg missed 25 days because of a left trap strain. And during that time, he used it to try to tighten up his mechanics, as Matt talked about. He throws a breaking ball that's skied out to right. Bryce Harper makes the catch. It's a fair ball, one away. And Freddie Galvis is the batter. <laughs> Breakdown of pitches and his velocity, I should say, the range of his velocity for his pitches. Starts Galvis off with a breaking ball. Mile an hour change up and it evens the count up at one ball, one strike. Thick at fastball and he just can't slow himself <laughs> down. No, no, and the cutter uh, just to change the levels, change of direction, totally spent before the ball was in the hitting zone. Whoa. Got a call right there again. Could have gone either way. Struck out three times today. That's eight strikeouts for Strasburg. Strasburg's the second hitter coming up next inning. I was thinking Matt might be a possibility. 
Dean. Wow. About the outside corner. Might be a possibility he might uh, go to Thornton and Dominic, but uh, second hitter next inning. Only in that there's like three three straight left-handed hitters. Yeah. Dominic's numbers this year seven for 39. No homers. Three doubles are his extra bases. Out in front of an off speed pitch. It's one ball and one strike. Sorry to Major League Scoreboard, the Braves lead the Pirates 2 0. That game's in the seventh inning. Jace Peterson has homered for Atlanta. I didn't check and see if McCutcheon was in the lineup today. McCutcheon was hit by a pitch yesterday. Uh, he was going to have further evaluations done today. Came back negative. Came back negative, okay. Yeah. Just a bruise. A lot of that going on. Or a contusion, I guess they call it. Outside, two and two. He is playing. He's 0 for 2 today. Gotcha. And he got him. Threw him a change up. And that's nine strikeouts for Strasburg. His afternoon is most likely complete. He really settled in. He allowed two runs, at least two runs so far. We'll go to the eighth inning. Nationals leading at 3 to 2. Phillies baseball is brought to you by WB Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. And buy Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Well, Mike, you've ordered up uh, bowls, which is great. You're going to order up some Philadelphia uh, water ice, too? Mm -hmm. Looks good. Busy day all the way around. Team one of two. And Luis Garcia threw just one pitch to get out of the seventh inning. Now begins the eighth against Taylor. Matt Dendecker's out in the on deck circle to pinch hit for Strasburg. And the slider high, it's one and zero. One ball, no strikes to Taylor. Pulls that one to short. Better hurry if you're Galvis. He charges and throws on the run in time. Hope he dropped the ball. I was looking at the foot to see if the foot was staying on the bag. I, I think the ball just fell out of his glove. Well, he did have to stretch into the runner pretty far. You know, generally that that catch is made. And he just dropped it. Well, that's a. It's a long way to stretch. It is a long way to stretch. I mean, like I say, I, I'm not making excuses, but 
Freddie got to make a better throw than that. I mean, the error, in my opinion, would go to Freddie on that ball, not not to Ryan Howard. Matt, your your take on that? Matt, wake up! <laughs> <laughs> no, he's thinking over here. The woods you can smell it. Uh, I, I would go uh, uh, put out to shortstop E, e three. Oh, really? E, e first baseman? Yeah. Tough error. Very tough error. Well, that is only the second error on Ryan Howard this year. As that ball was butted and foul by Dendecker. Dendecker has two hits. He's two for ten for the Nationals. They acquired him from the Mets. This is going to hurt right here. Oh, yeah. It's a growing shot. That's what happens when you jab at the baseball bat instead of leaving the baseball bat out in front of home plate. Ooh, Ball's dude. butted foul. Pitchers are mean. They did the three, just throw the same pitch in there. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that Dendecker hasn't had to do too many sacrifices in his career. Doesn't look like it. No. It's a pretty good young hitter, though. Showed some power the first game with a two run home run. That one is outside, and now it's one ball and two strikes. Interesting call here, but the, the two strike bunt. He really wants that guy to get to second base. Although Taylor has enough speed where he could even swipe second base if he chose to. Dead Decker does not have any sacrifice bunts during his big league career. And he takes a strike three on the outside corner. One out runner at first. Time for the major league notebook, Murph. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Tom. It is presented by St. Joseph's University. The Cardinals beat the Cubs 8 to 1 last night. They are the first team in Major League Baseball to hit that 50 win mark. But uh, maybe more impressive is, is that they've done it in less than 75 games. They've done it in 74 games. The last team to do that back in 2005, the Chicago White Sox won 50 games before their 75th game. They went on to win the World Series. And we remember uh, the Baltimore Orioles. We missed uh, Adam Jones last week. Uh, he was injured with a sore shoulder. Well, he is back in the line up today for them as they are playing a doubleheader down there in Baltimore as well. And that is your Major League Notebook. And guys, we're back up here in Section 417 with the Romans and uh, enjoying this game. Uh, down one. Not, not too bad. Not too down bad, one. right? Down one's okay. <laughs> not too bad. And they've got some time to catch up. And, you know, we, we were talking to uh, some folks in the Phillies ticket office and uh, Ken Duffy, uh, who, uh, who runs our ticket office, said, uh, why don't we invite the Roman family down uh, for game number two down in section 132? So I'm going to pass these tickets out to you guys. And uh, I know you're staying for both games, so. You'll get a little bit of a different view from 417 to 132 in the next game. Is that all right? Thank you so much. That's awesome. Ask, ask Ed what he thinks. Ed, what do you think? Are you happy to be moving? Ed says it is all right with him. <laughs> They're pretty good seats. They're down behind the visitor's dugout. So thanks to the folks in the ticket office. And uh, thanks to you guys for being loyal season ticket holders. We certainly Thank appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's awesome. All right, Murph, we appreciate that. It's a great gesture on the part of the Phils. Then our span dumps one over short. Yeah, he does. So he is aboard to put runners on first and second. He's been on base three straight times. And now Danny Espinosa. Well, you got to keep this at a one run game. At least that would be. That's the priority right now is to keep this at a one run game. Pitch just inside one ball no strikes Garcia is earned run average 3.44. He's had a very solid year for the Phils. And this is one of those plus situations where the Phillies are within a run. On the outside corner it's one ball and one strike.
this is Garcia's inning. There's nobody else warming up out in the pen. Giles was warming up before. You got Harper in the on deck circle. That one's fouled on the left field line. Araujo is available. But Garcia has been used in these innings where he needs to get righties and lefties. There's Harper. Slider and he picks up his second strikeout. Two outs here at the eighth inning. Very interesting situation right here, Matt. You're not allowed to walk a guy intentionally, right? With the with first base occupied. Who says you can't? <laughs> the baseball god, somebody says that. I tell you what, I would consider that right here with Ramos on deck. What do you think? Well, Barry Bonds got a chance to walk to the bases loaded one time. I think you pitch very carefully. And I mean very carefully. Yeah, because if you get a gapper here, it's probably going to mean two runs with the speed the Nationals have on the base paths. A slider to start them off, it's 0 and 1. That's not very careful right there. That's a slider that catches too much of the plate. It also makes you think you can get him out. Yeah. Not that you don't think that. I'm talking playing the percentages is now you get an 0 and 1 count on him. You start to think, well, now he's more vulnerable. Outside, one ball, one strike. Harper today is one for three. Doubled his first time up, grounded out, walked, and flied out to left. Very hard slider down and in. Mike mentioned earlier how hard it is for a left hander to lay off that pitch. Tell himself to see the ball. One ball, two strikes to Harper. In the dirt, Rupp keeps it in front, <laughs> two and two. Excellent block by Cameron Rupp again on that hard breaking ball. Perfect technique. Big feet, soft hands. Hmm. A couple big pitches coming up here in this game. The Nationals leading it by one here in the top of the eighth inning. Runners on first and second. Two balls and two strikes to Bryce Harper. Got it. He went after a slider in the dirt. Rupp kept it in front. Tosses to first. The side is retired. Pretty good pitching right there by Luis Garcia. Three strikeouts in the inning for Luis. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's still a one run ball game.
Hyundai defensive plays of the game. This is kind of the other way. This is a ball that was smoked to right field by the Washington Nationals. Frank Core has trouble with it. And Denard Spann is able to go to third after <laughs> throws that bar of soap. Yeah, that was wild. I actually think Howard might have uh, made a little bit more aggressive effort at that ball. Uh, just missed it by about an inch. And there you see the wild pitch that let the run in where Ugly didn't try to score uh, when he was one out and man on third going on contact. He ended up scoring anyway. So then those are the Hyundai defensive plays of the game. They're not always good plays, correct? We mix it up every once in a while, just as defense. Here's Ben Revere to lead things off against Matt Thornton. So Strasburg done after seven, as we mentioned. Revere takes a strike. It's 0 1. It'll be Revere, Hernandez, and Franco. It's Thornton now. Carpenter's warming up as well. So we get a miss 0 and 2. Matt Thornton, a very good fastball, 93 95. Slider, which you just saw, very good, and a changeup from 86 to 88. No balls and two strikes. Outside, one ball, two strikes. Got to get a base runner here in the eighth inning. So we're going to miss. Revere strikes out. So one out here in the eighth, and now Cesar Hernandez. And Matt Williams is going to go to the bullpen. They want Hernandez to bat left handed. So they're going to go to the righty Carpenter to face Cesar and then Michael Franco. So one batter is it for Matt Thornton. His afternoon is complete. And a pitching change here at Citizens Bank Park. Infinity fireworks will take place post game coming up this Wednesday and Thursday when the Phillies take on the Milwaukee Brewers. This year's musical track is recorded by the Philadelphia Orchestra. The Phillies will have uh, another set of games on this homestand against the Brewers, a four game series that begins on Monday. First, the finish, uh, finishing touches on this one, and then the second game of the doubleheader against the Nationals. Pitching change for Washington with one out. And David Carpenter will Free be the spirit, new pitcher. Huh? <laughs> she had that move down. Carpenter's I sixth never, game. I never was able to just stand in, you know, with around 15,000 people and just let it. I think it would have been hilarious if you had done it. If you if you had done I'm it, doing it over the third base, <laughs> you may have just done it <laughs> on the camera. You may have just done it. Pretty good chance you did. Well, if I'd have known that, I'd have done it. <laughs> You know, with a little rhythm. I was trying to imitate that young lady. You know, she wasn't doing it with rhythm. <laughs> there he is. 
Smithy, you always got to remember you're on oh, camera. That's great. <laughs> now, I wondered how Jeffrey back in the truck knew what we were doing all the time. <laughs> so always keeping an eye on us right there. All right. And we got stuff over the years. I mean, we've got Sarge trying to do the chicken dance. That wasn't really working out that well. Wheels doing that dance after uh, Phillies won the world championship. That was bad. <laughs> that was some that one's that moved out to left. motion for sure. Here comes Taylor. He can't get it. He knocks it on one hop and saves our Hernandez is aboard with a one out single. All right. Tying runners aboard. There you go. Um, we haven't got Matt dancing or doing anything like that. You got to do something. You won't. You won't. Good effort right here. Got very lucky. Taylor did that. That's he right. dropped the ball in front you're, of him. You're exactly right. That ball bounces away from him a little bit to Cesar goes to second. Yep. So Hernandez is at first. Here's Michael Franco. Right now it's DeFreitas that's throwing in the bullpen. Let's see if the Phillies can get something going here. And tie this ball game up might be a different story. Franco just missed one. He hits that a mile high to shallow right field, and Ugla makes the catch. Two outs. Swing in the reaction. Ball's a little bit up. Guys throw hard like that, Matt. That ball just seems to get to the top of the bat, doesn't it? It does always. You know, you feel like you just missed it. You timed it right. A little rise, mid 90s fastball. Wow, it seems to find the top of the bat. <laughs> so now, Ryan Howard. Howard has walked today, but he's also struck out twice. Two strikes, 96 mile an hour fastball from David Carpenter. Interesting defensive alignment again now. Uh, shortstop right behind second base rather than on the yeah. right field side of second base. Yeah, so there's an opening where Ryan does hit a lot of his a lot of his uh, his ground balls. 0-2. Hernandez leads off first. He goes. Pitch is taken outside. The throw to second on one hop goes off the glove of Desmond. Second stolen base of the day for Cesar. So now the tying run is in scoring position. I think Hernandez kind of took advantage of them paying so much attention to Howard that he got a tremendous jump at first base. Still on that bag very easy. Putting himself in a scoring position now for a big two out knock. Well, I wouldn't want any part of Frank Coor. No. <laughs> part with the Nationals. Absolutely. There's a heater in. See if he could turn on it. And he pulls it foul. It's interesting that the, the Washington Nationals have not uh, changed their sign sequence throughout today. And on second base, they're going with the exact same sign the whole game today. A lot of teams go with touches, chest guard, face. That's all about location. Almost kind of tried to frame it down into the into the strike zone. It's good catching.
He's smooth back there, isn't he? And one of the great catchers in the league. The guy that they got for Matt Caps in a trade with the Minnesota Twins. The Twins had a surplus of catchers. Spearheaded by Joe Mauer. Two balls, two strikes to Howard. And he fights it off foul to stay alive. You know, it's funny. In this at bat, if I'm not mistaken, has this been an all fastball at bat so far to Howard? It really has. I mean, yep. when you think about the opposition and their treatment of a, a hitter like Howard, they, they must know something. Um, not to you know to feel like in this in this at bat you know in the old days Howard. Get five straight fastballs in that bat where you're the winning run in the game. You're the cleanup hitter. You don't see that very often. Well, I'm surprised they haven't thrown that back foot slider yet. Carpenter has a a very hard and a good slider. Applebot has joined Defreitas out of the bullpen. It is Carpenter against Howard with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The tying run at second base. A high three and two. Now this is Carpenter's hitter. There's nobody else warming up to the bullpen for the Nationals. They're the ninth pitch of the at bat for Ryan. Well, I don't think anything would change now. That's what six straight fastballs. Now. Absolutely, huh? Yep. I guess you're Ryan and Howard right now. You think fastball uh, Iron Mike out there throwing it 95, 96. Just get the head out. Throw something off speed here. Heck with it. Look at that. He threw him a breaking there ball. And Howard strikes out. That's some serious, uh, serious pitching. Challenge him with six straight fastballs and then a cutter, a nasty slider down and in off the plate. So the Phillies leave one in scoring position. We'll go to the ninth inning. It's still a one run Nationals lead. Of the game. Now there haven't been a lot of deliveries, but we go back to the sixth inning for the Nationals. Taylor smokes this one down in the left field corner, and that drives in a run to uh, give the Nationals the lead at that point, and they haven't relinquished that lead. They lead it three to two. Well, it's a new dance now. It's Bongo Cam. This one's got her moving a little bit more. Bongo Cam is very popular here at the, the ballpark. Justin DeFreitas will take over. 35th game for DeFreitas. 0 and 1 with a 5.68 ERA. And he'll face Wilson Ramos as we start the top of the ninth inning. A little high. When last we left Jake Diekman, he was. Uh, Throwing a lot of pitches at Yankee Stadium That's that Wednesday, the day game. A 
reminder that coming up on Comcast Sportsnet about 30 minutes or so after this one is finished. The Phillies and the Nationals game two of this straight doubleheader. One ball one strike to Ramos. <laughs> so we're going to miss. Now each team is allowed to add a 26th player. It's a rule that was put in place back in 2012. The Phillies are going to add Severino Gonzalez. And for the Nationals. They didn't add anybody in. For game one. They may add somebody for game two. It all depended on who their starting pitcher was going to be. If a doubleheader. A day nighter or a regular doubleheader is scheduled 48 hours uh, from the time it's postponed. Then you can add a guy. Bulls Barbecue is waiting for us, by the way. Right behind this wall behind oh, us. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, sir. That one's out to right field. Dominic Brown comes in, dives, and makes the catch. Great recovery for Dominic Brown. One out here at the top of the ninth inning. Uh, you're the outfielder. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, honestly, I think to start with, he got fooled with the swing. He broke back a little bit. Ball died a little bit, but he recovered very nice, like Tommy said, and made a very nice diving catch. Hard landing, but nice catch. That was like the concentration right there, the ball going in the glove. A little face plant. Clint Robinson fouls the first pitch back. So nice job by Dominic Brown making sure the Nationals didn't add a base runner here in the ninth inning. Tyler Moore, excuse me, not Robinson. Moore came on as a pinch hitter last time and struck out looking. I should have known one was a lefty wearing 21, the other's a righty wearing 12. Oh, and two. We'll have Frank Core, the pitcher's spot, and Cameron Rupp in their half of the ninth inning. And it's one ball and two strikes. Tyler's got that shin guard on, which is usually supposed to cover your ankle area, but he fouled the ball off and has not lowered it since then. Pulled down the left field line, it'll be foul. I'm looking ahead to the next inning as you were, Tommy, and we're going to see Frank Core, and then we're either going to see uh, Whitey, right? Andres Blanco. Blanco or um, Ruff. Darren, Darren Ruff. Ruff. My guess is Blanco, if there's a man on. Saving rough for the Galvis uh, slot if it gets to that. Yeah, Pete looks like he's going. <laughs> Pete looks like he's going over right there. Do a little managing here. <laughs> is Pete talking to uh, Larry Boa? That's exactly what they're talking about yeah. right now. Drew Storen's warming up for the bullpen for the Nationals. Outside three and two. Then when Frank Cor hits a single, you bring in Herrera to pinch run for him. Well, we pretty much cleared the entire Blanco. bench, boys. Blanco. Pinch run Blanco? No, or Franco. Oh, no, that's no, Frank Coor. Frank Coor, I'm sorry. <laughs> Check swing ground ball. Howard's got it. 3 1 on the put out. Howard's we getting pretty slick with that little uh, option play flip there, you know. He made the right decision to go after it once he started to break and then. Freitas was there to cover, but yeah, he's been timely with it. Go ahead, Michael, the infielder. <laughs> nice. Nice, confident play. A little backhand flip. Perfect lead. Watch it in the glove. Watch the foot touch the bag. <laughs> Ball, no strikes to Ugla, who has three hits today. He's playing his way into the lineup. Game two. And they have not put Escobar on the disabled list. 
So he's probably still sore. So Ugla could get a chance to play second, and Espinosa could play third again. They do have Emmanuel Burris as well. Two balls, no strikes to Ugla. Outside, three and zero. Oh. Ball four. So he walks for the first time. And Desmond will not bat. Desmond grounds it to shortstop. Galvis is up with it. And he flips underhand, not in time. Oh, they are going to say in time. They may review that one if they choose to. Matt Williams is telling to hold the defense. Thought he got his foot in there before the toss. Why not? Unless we're missing something with our with the naked eye. I think the toss was late. Maybe it's well, you know, what you know yeah if, if you know what happened it's a bad slide really yeah if he if he slides straight into that bag if his foot doesn't jump up in the air I, I see, agree. We'll see it again he might have been safe well Paul Emmel was the crew chief with Jerry Neals having this first game off so they are going to review this back in New York and we'll see the naked eye thought Ugly got his foot in there. there. Look at the well, replay. Yeah. Okay. Oof. Yeah, I don't know if his foot is on the bag or not ahead of the throw. See how his foot right yep. there. See how it goes up in the air instead of straight to the bag. Yeah, I think he's out. Uh, looking at that replay. Like naked eye, I thought he was safe. I don't know what you guys thought. I but thought he was safe with the naked eye. I just think it was a. A nonchalant well, play. Yeah. Expecting a, that you had all kinds of time in the world. Well, first of all, right there, Cesar Hernandez should have maybe stretched out Absolutely. to get that ball a little yeah. sooner, like it was uh, going to be close. Well, they'll take a look at this. Here. This view here looks like he's out. Yes. The view from home plate side going shooting to him. Looks like he's safe. I couldn't tell. You, you might be right, but I couldn't tell from that one. Yeah. You thought safe from that 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 advantage from that, point. From that advantage point there, I thought he looked like he was out. Yeah. You know who hopes he's safe? Ian Desmond. <laughs> it's a knock. No, it's not. It's a fielder's choice. Not if a player beats a throw. Fielder's choice. Oh, you have to ask Jay Dunn about that. <laughs> But I mean, well, if you beat a throw to second base on an infield ground ball, if the runner beats a throw, it's used to be a knock for the hitter. If you have no play at first base, so if you're going in the hole and you flip it to second base and he beats you at second base, which happened earlier, but he had a chance to come up throw across the infield, and you would have had him. Yeah, we, which which happened earlier on that ball in the hole where I, Galvis. I could be wrong. My wife usually tells me I am so. <laughs> All right, so we'll look at it one more time. The ball's in the glove. And look where the foot is on that same frame. Oh, do they, do, does New York have the ability to they look at it that way? They have whatever we have. They have whatever we have, yep. So that's where the ball's in the glove. So he should be okay. And they've timed it to yeah, where that's where the foot is. That's what we've gotten to technology-wise. Let's get the sign down there to the board. But they are still looking at it comes down to it I don't even know if we didn't have that shot that we just showed and that New York saw I don't know if they would have enough conclusive evidence to overturn it heard a lot of uh, discussion on MLB last week about the replay this year and and that they were suggesting that in the future the umpires wear an IFB in their ear you have one guy and like don't up have where to we are you have, yeah. you have the fifth umpire in a booth right here looking at where, what we're looking at well, the call stands. The put out will go six to four next time. Hopefully, Galvis and Hernandez will do it a little crisper.
gives his full analysis and breakdown of game one of today's doubleheader and prepares you for game two of the matchup. Only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Phil's last chance down by one. They'll face Drew Storen, the closer for the Nationals. He's had a solid year. And he will face Jeff Francoeur. And then a pinch hitter. Darren Ruff is out in the on deck circle. But we'll see what Francoeur does first to see whether it's Ruff that will pinch hit. So there's Storen warming up. He's reestablished himself as the closer for the Washington Nationals and is among the league leaders in saves. In between games of the double ladder, you got have options. You got Bulls barbecue, you got hot dogs in the lunchroom, you got pizza in the lunchroom. You can have all of it if you want to. It's like a buffet. Drew Store in 31st game, 22 saves, 24 opportunities. First guy he'll face is Frank Cor, who's two for three today with two RBIs. He's driven in both runs for the Phillies, who have five hits this afternoon. Outside, one and zero. Oh. Although Storin's numbers are very good this year, we have watched not only in person but from a distance. We've watched how he can struggle with his command. Not as much this year, though. He has 12 career saves against the Phillies with an ERA of 2.59. That one is hit out towards center. It's not deep. Span coming in, and he makes the catch. I think the swing or the batter fooled him. The power of the batter fooled him. Yeah, he's playing deep, kind of in a no doubles uh, defense. And Frank, Frank Ford takes big swing. It looked like uh, he started back and hung up. You know, it wasn't hit well. It was uh, jammed him. Hung up for him. Well, now Darren Ruff will pinch hit. Rolling the dice, trying to get get a pop here. Same scenario. He starts him off with a breaking ball. It's one another. Wait. Frank's getting ready. Hey guys, how are you? Good, Frank. How are you, buddy? How far is <laughs> Frank wants to know how long he's going to be on TV. <laughs> Frank, we're going to tie it up here. He, he might be a while. Yeah, Frank's getting ready for the ice cream. The rush on the ice cream. Two and zero. Oh. Well, it might get one to hit right here, Matt. Yep, and that's what I'm having in between the break. Yeah. Are you? You Coke already had it. You already had ice cream. That's tomorrow then. You're having a Bulls, Schmitter. I'm having a Schmitter at Bulls Barbecue. Here's the duo pitch to Ruff. <laughs> there it is. That one is hit out toward left field. He just missed it. Yes, he did. Michael Taylor is under it, dancing around. Boy, Ooh. he get a pitch to hit. And there are two outs. Man. Two away, Cameron Ruff. Uh, that's what you call a 2 0 cookie, Smitty. Wow. Right down the middle, and that's. <laughs> Been there, done that many times. Yep. You hardly ever hit them when, you're, when they're on your mind. Well, you did. <laughs> you see, we're always on your mind, right? <laughs> always. <laughs> Well, here is Rupp with two outs and a strike to him. It's 0 and 1. Ball toward the hole. Backhanded by Desmond. Flips over to first on one hop, and the winning streak is up to eight games for the Washington Nationals. 
as they hang on and win it today by a final score of three to two in game one of this doubleheader. Well, a fine play by Ian Desmond. He knew exactly who was running and he had time. And he put enough on that one hop throw to nail Cameron Rupp to finish up this game. Yeah, this is a nice play. Uh, you got the right guy running. And he knew when he went over to backhand that he was going to bounce it to first. Just a quick release over to Moore, who's a great first baseman, great defensive first baseman. And uh, pretty simple. Well, Chevrolet player of the game. Uh, this one I think is pretty simple too. Is Steven Strasburg, who seemed to get better as the game went on here. He, he did. He, uh, he didn't throw a lot of change-ups, but I thought he had very good control of his curveball when he didn't need to throw a backdoor curveball. But the main thing is that he used that fastball to his advantage, throwing up the 90 mile an hour fastball at 99 today. Good command. I thought Matt Williams did a nice job of bringing him back out to pitch the seventh inning to give him some confidence and deep into the game. Well, he gets the victory to improve his record to five and five. The Nationals take game one of this doubleheader by a final score of three to two. We'll be back to Philadelphia to wrap up game one right after this.